have Oyi Adekunle for the latest in business. Hello, Oyi. Hi, Anita. In the past few days, what's been much talked about is the xenophobic attacks between Nigeria and South Africa. And we see here that it's having a negative consequence for the Nigerian economy. Uh, please tell us uh, more about that. Oh, you're absolutely correct, Aneta. Just like the federal government, financial experts have condemned violent attacks on South African businesses in Nigeria. Hundreds of Nigerians have been temporarily put out of jobs as MTN Nigeria shut down all its outlets across the country. And experts say there might be further decline in Nigeria's gross domestic products if the situation is not immediately addressed. Fidelia Agoncha has the details. Attacks on South African-owned businesses is one way Nigerians are reacting to the xenophobic crisis rocking Southern Africa. This tit-for-tat trend has grounded the activities of top brands like MTN and ShopRite. While some Nigerians seem to be satisfied with this development, economic experts have raised alarm on the possible impacts. I noticed that the model used by some of these big stores, particularly that have been attacked uh, in Nigeria today, they have franchise. The real commodity are owned by Nigerians. The land is owned by a Nigerian. The, the, the building is owned by a Nigerian. So what Nigerians are doing is not attacking South Africa. Yes, you're attacking a brand which has a, which has a value here. Yeah, it can be affected at, on the stock market. But who pays for it on the immediate is that Nigerian who is employed, who is on, um, say, $2 a day salary or $5 a day salary, who is going to be out of work based on the secular issue for fear of attack by another Nigerian who wants to protect Nigerian, not knowing that it's really affecting Nigerians. Alaji also highlights the long-term effects of the crisis on the Nigerian economy. There will be reduction of economic activity as it affects grocery, as it affects telecommunication, and so on and so forth. By the time Third quarter, third quarter report is coming, those sectors will be affected. So if you don't have growth in other areas to swallow the reduction, the GDP figure that we claim is down by uh, to 1.94% may further go down. Since the start of the week, no fewer than five foreigners have been killed in South Africa, where locals blame migrants for the growing rate of unemployment and overpopulation. Alaji says South Africa needs a proper empowerment scheme to engage unemployed youth while using the population to grow its economy. South African government, and when I say government now, beyond um, modern government, beyond democratic government, I mean traditional role in South Africa, they are the forefront of this. They know how to speak to these people. Most of these people are not educated. And those that are educated are among them, they are not fully educated. Those South Africans that are educated, are, they have job. they're qualified to get jobs. So authorities in South Africa may want to design a scheme for the people because the people you have not taken care of, they will come to destroy what you have taken care of. Even what your friends, your neighboring country are taking care of, they will destroy them. What South Africa should see is opportunity for their people, opportunity to further develop if foreigners are coming to their country to do business. How maybe do we increase revenue? Do we generate revenue? Renewed xenophobic attacks on Nigerians in South Africa has strained bilateral relations with both countries. In the space of 24 hours, Nigeria has recalled her ambassador to South Africa, pulled out of the World Economic Summit in Cape Town, and initiated processes to repatriate citizens from the country. Fidelia Agoncha, TV360, Nigeria.